Borders Books is starting its final chapter this weekend. After 40 years in business, Borders will shut its doors over the next two months. And CBS News national correspondent Dean Reynolds looks at why this nationwide chain is finally going bust. Joe Gable worked at Borders Books for 34 years until he was laid off in 2008. By then, he says, the writing was on the wall. You know, with Borders, it was just a downward spiral. You know, I saw the train wreck coming years ago. He and others blame Borders' demise on inept management, a taste for too much expansion, a strict focus on the bottom line, and a foot-dragging approach to the digital age. Borders' main competitor, Barnes & Noble, was quick to come out with its Nook e-reader. And today, for every hardcover book that's purchased at Barnes & Noble, three digital versions are sold. Customers know about Nook, as well as Amazon's Kindle. But Borders was generally missing in e-reader action. For the record, theirs is called Kobo. Their reaction to the changing economic conditions has been less than perfect. I'm not sure I'd use the word victim, but they were certainly affected by both changing technology and changing tastes. The company was founded here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where Karsten Honka is a city councilman. It was a part of my life growing up, uh, and I think this community has a really strong emotional attachment to, to borders. The liquidation process of selling off their inventory starts today, and by the end of September, all 399 remaining stores will be closed. 10,700 employees will lose their jobs. Company executives declined interview requests but issued a statement. We were all working towards a different outcome, it read, but the headwinds we have been facing for quite some time, including the rapidly changing book industry, e-reader revolution, and turbulent economy have brought us to where we are now. At the Borders flagship store here in Ann Arbor, customers told us they'll miss the bookstore experience. You know, when you're browsing, um, you can see stuff in a bookstore a lot faster than you can online. Nicola Rooney agrees. She runs Nicola's Books here in Ann Arbor. An independent bookseller, her one store looks very much the way Borders did before it got so big. Still, she's not happy her competitor is closing. It's bad for the book business. It gives gives people a, a sort of image that it's it's on, dying. it's dying, which it's not by any means. But for Borders, there will be no storybook ending. Dean Reynolds, CBS News, Ann Arbor.